In this tutorial, we're going to look at how to execute code conditionally. So to get started, let's close our scope.java file, right-click the default package, select New, and Class. I'll call this class Conditionals, and click Finish. I'm going to create my main method inside of the Conditionals class by typing main and pressing Control plus spacebar and hitting Enter. Now let's have our program produce some output. I'm going to put a couple of print lines in here by typing SYSO, pressing control spacebar. In the first one I'm going to put a string that says hello, and I'll do it once more with a string that says goodbye. And if we run that, we'll see that hello and goodbye is printed to the console. So what do I mean by executing code conditionally? Well, so far all the code we've written in this series has executed in a sort of linear top-to-bottom way. Everything in the main method and the methods that get called from it gets executed. Now we want to be able to test if a given condition is true and only execute some code when it is. And if it is false, we could skip that code or execute something entirely different. The way we do that in most programming languages is with something called an if statement. So, to give you an idea of what an if statement looks like, I'm going to go to the top of our main method, and inside of a comment, I'm going to type if, parentheses, some expression that evaluates to true, close parentheses, and go in a bit and say do something. So that's the general form of an if statement. So let's make our systemout.println's execute based on conditions. So above our systemout.println hello, I'm going to type if and then parentheses. And now we need some expression that evaluates to true. The simplest one to use is a simple boolean. And a boolean can hold two values, either true or false. So we could just say if true then execute this line. And typically lines inside if statements are tabbed in. We also usually want to surround the code executing after an if statement with curly braces, just like you would with a method. So after if true, you would put an opening curly brace, and after our printout, we would put a closing curly brace. And now, if true, which is always true, will run all the code within the curly braces. Then the if statement ends, and we'll continue with our program. So we can run that, and just to show you it works, we'll see hello and goodbye is printed to the console. And now, if we change true to false, and run it again, we'll see that only goodbye has been printed to the console. So our program skipped executing this line of code, because it did not pass the condition. Now instead of just saying if true or if false, I'm going to create a variable. And the variable will be type boolean, and we'll call it say hello, and we'll set it equal to true. And now instead of saying if false, we can say if say hello. Now what that essentially is saying is if say hello evaluates to true, which it will, then execute this line of code. I'm going to create another variable called boolean say goodbye and set that equal to false. And down here I'll surround our goodbye printout with an if statement if say goodbye opening curly brace closing curly brace and tab it in and now if we run it we'll see that only hello is printed out because goodbye is false, so this line does not get executed. Now say that we know that we either want to say hello or goodbye, but we never want to say both at the same time. And the way to do it is by using what's called an else clause. And the way that works is we execute the if statement. If the if statement evaluates false, this code does not get executed. 
But if the if statement is followed by something called an else clause, which looks like this after the closing curly brace, if we put else and then another opening curly brace and closing curly brace, if the if statement evaluates to false, then whatever is in the else statement gets executed. So we could copy our system out dot print line goodbye and put it inside of our else clause. Then we could just go ahead and get rid of our if goodbye if statement as well as our say goodbye variable. And now if we run it, say hello is true, and hello gets printed out. And if we set say hello to false and run it again, we'll see that goodbye is printed. Now there are many different conditional operators we can use inside of if statements that will evaluate to true or false. Some examples might be if 5 is greater than 10, that would evaluate to false. Or if 10 is greater than 5, that would evaluate to true. Likewise, you would also have a less than statement if 5 is less than 10, which would evaluate to true. So there are all kinds of conditional operators we can use. And I'll put some of them in a comment here. We can use greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. We can use not equal, which is a exclamation point followed by an equal sign. Now what an exclamation point means in this context is a logical not. So this would read as not equal to. And lastly, if we want to test if two things are equal to each other, we would say equals equals. Now this double equals operator is the source of a very common programming mistake. For example, if I was going to write an if statement and I wanted to test if some variable x is equal to 5, it's tempting to just write it as this, as if x equals 5. But the way Java interprets this is it gets to the if statement, it then evaluates what is inside the if statement, which isn't testing equality, but is actually assigning the value 5 into x. If we want to test if x is equal to 5, we would type x doubled equals 5. So let's comment those out and put a little note in. So if x single equals 5, that will assign 5 to x. If x double equals 5, it will test whether x has the value 5. In other words, it will either be true or false. Now, with an if statement, we can also test if multiple conditions are true, or if only one of several conditions is true. And the way we would do that is to use operators that test whether some condition and another condition are true, or if some condition or another condition are true. So what we need is an operator for and, and an operator for or. And in Java, the AND operator looks like two ampersands, and the OR operator looks like two vertical bars, which on my keyboard is shift plus backslash. So to demonstrate these, we could write an if statement like if true and true system out and executed. And if true or false, system out or executed. And if we run that, we'll see that both of them got executed. So we could change this up and say if true and false, and if false or false, and we should see that neither of them gets executed. Now you can accomplish this same functionality by embedding if statements inside of other if statements. So in this case, if true and false, I could take out the and false and say if true, and then whatever is inside of these curly braces will run, and inside of the curly braces I could say if false, and put another set of curly braces, 
And now if true gets evaluated, and whatever is inside of if true gets executed, which happens to be another if statement, which evaluates to false, so this line does not run. So logically, if true with an if false is equivalent to if true and false. So I'm going to go back to what we had before by undoing. So now let's create a more practical example. Let's say our problem is we're creating a video game and our character is on the screen and we want to test to see if our character's exposition is going off the screen either on the left side or the right side. So how could we set that up? Well, let's create a variable and we'll say int player x equals 50. So this variable represents our player's exposition on the screen. So what we want to do now is to test if player x is either less than zero or greater than whatever the width of our game is. So we'll be going down here to the or statement and first we would type if player x is less than zero. So if this evaluates to true it means our player is past the left side of the screen or we want to test if player x is greater than say 800 which would mean our player is past the right side of the screen. And then inside of the if statement we could put some code that reverses our player's direction so that if the player gets to one side of the screen he'll reverse directions and go towards the other. So let's put a comment above that if statement. So we'll say if our player is past the left side of the screen or if our player is past the right side of the screen. And if either of these is true, then execute the code inside of the if statement. Now there's one last thing I'd like to talk about with if statements, and that is that you can chain them together. If we go back up to our first example, where we say if say hello, we could actually chain several conditionals together. And to do that, I'm going to create another variable called say hey, and set that equal to false initially. And now we'll say if say hello to this line of code, else if say hey, we'll change goodbye to hey, and finally, else, say goodbye. So the way this executes is, if say hello evaluates to true, we'll print out hello. And say hello is false, so this line does not get executed. Else if, say hey evaluates to true, print out hey, and say hey is false, so this line does not get executed. Else, system out dot print line goodbye. So because neither say hello nor say hey were true, we get to this else statement and goodbye is printed out. If we run it, we'll see that. But if we were to set say hey to true, for example, and run it, we'll see that only hey is printed out. So the way a chain of if statements gets evaluated is only the first statement to evaluate to true gets executed. And what I mean by that is, if say hello is true, the rest of this does not get executed. If say hello is false and say hey is true, the else does not get executed. And if both say hello and say hey are false, then only the else is executed. And we can also remove the else. And if both are false, then neither of these lines will be executed, and our program will simply continue. So to reiterate on what we've learned in this tutorial, we have an if statement, followed by some expression that evaluates to either true or false, followed by some code to execute if the condition is true. And we can use these relational operators to test if something is true or false. And we can also use Boolean variables. And if you want to test for multiple conditions, you can use the AND operator or the OR operator. So by now you should have some familiarity with if statements and be fairly comfortable experimenting with them. Thanks for watching.